I have a new book out, but more on that later. The internet has, in recent years, made it difficult to discuss certain topics, but there's something I want to talk about. This is not about any one ongoing conflict or evolving situation. It's about how we think about international diplomacy. The United States has what could, at best, be called a confused foreign policy. In reality, we never really recovered from the end of the Cold War. We, as a country, don't know what we want. And so anytime an international crisis develops, regardless of how it originated or where in the world it is, the citizens of the United States devolve into squabbling about what to do about it. And that's partially a good thing. After all, what is democracy for if not discussion? But one of the things that has started to grate on me more and more over the past few years is that no one really seems to understand how international relations works. Now, I'm not talking about real politic here, or Bismarckian diplomacy, or even the game of diplomacy. Nor am I talking about the specific laws, treaties, and regulations that make up international relations. What I want to talk about today is conceptually how one government can interact with another, how that determines what that nation can do, and how it helps us determine what we, in turn, want our country to do. International interactions can essentially be boiled down to three levers. Diplomatic, economic, and military. That's it. That's all you get. If you are a nation who wants to impose your will on another country, you get those three tools. Diplomatic, economic, military. I don't care if it's a natural disaster, two nations going to war, terrorism, or aliens invading. If you are a nation who wants to affect other nations, you have a diplomatic lever, an economic lever, and a military lever. Now, these levers aren't binary. They aren't switches. A lever can be pulled a little bit or a lot, and levers can be pulled individually or in concert, both within a country and in coordination with other countries. When we as citizens think about what action we want our country to take, we should be thinking in terms not of political parties or ideologies, but of these levers, of which levers we want our government to pull and how far we want our government to pull them. The diplomatic lever is the one most often pulled, and in my opinion, the least useful, the diplomatic lever is pulled any time one nation condemns another or offers their condolences. It's in toothless UN resolutions and pulling diplomats from countries and in opening or closing embassies. The economic lever is the one we hear about most often in the news. This includes economic aid to disadvantaged countries, economic sanctions, tariffs, and boycotts. It can be very effective if maintained over a long time frame and often requires the coordination of other countries. And then there's the military lever, the one we think about most when discussing geopolitics. This includes selling or gifting military technology to other countries, direct military action, and covert actions. You'll notice I didn't list espionage. That's because spying isn't a lever. Spying is what gets you the information to know which lever will have the most effect. Levers can also be pulled together for a combined result. For example, blockades, which are a military action with an economic cost or sanctions which require diplomatic and economic coordination. We may not think about it in these terms, at least not directly, but when an international incident happens in the world, the leadership of various countries, including ours, have to weigh their options. And those options take the form of those three levers. Those three levers contain the sum total options, the entire set of tools a nation has at their disposal. This is why it is crucial for us to understand how they work. We can shout, do something, from the rooftops until we're blue in the face, but it won't have much impact unless we know what that something is. Pulling each one of those levers has a cost, and the cost goes up the more levers you pull and the farther you pull them. As a citizen, when faced with an international crisis, it's important to stop and think about the costs you are willing to pay. Are you for full military intervention, wrenching that lever as far as it will go? 
Are you okay with only pulling the diplomatic lever a little bit, condemning the target nation, but taking no further action? When an international crisis erupts, much of the discourse around the internet, I'm looking at you Reddit, are focused on how we got here and who's right, but rarely on what we should do about it. We love to point the finger to climb on our soapboxes and claim the moral high ground, but rarely do we like to discuss the nitty gritty of how we should actually go about solving these problems. And I think that's partially because we see these problems as large, complicated, and insurmountable. We don't even really understand what our solutions are, so we fight about how we got here instead of how we're going to move forward. The next time an international crisis erupts, I want you to think about these three levers, about what they mean and what the cost and outcomes for pulling them are. If two nations go to war, do you want to pull the diplomatic lever letting them know you disprove without involving yourself in the conflict? Do you want to pull the economic lever, hitting the infringing nation with sanctions or denying them economic aid? Or are you willing to pull the red lever and directly involve your nation's military? We need to ask ourselves what tools we are willing to use and how far we are willing to pursue them. Only once we have a clear understanding of the options at our disposal can we give serious thought to how we're going to fix these situations rather than simply arguing about them online. I'm Michael Aguero. Thanks for watching. I have a new book out. It's called Trial of Atlas, and it's about a murder, which is nice and simple and nowhere near as complicated as international diplomacy. If politics is more your jam, I wrote a book called Rebuilding the Executive about the structure, function, and limitations of the executive branch of the United States government. You can pick them both up on Amazon Kindle or Google Play along with all of my other work. Every bit of support helps the channel. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.